Hi everybody, we're all here today because Heart Hyperloop has accomplished a big technological breakthrough that might change the way we're gonna travel enormously. And that's what this whole live broadcast is all about. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We really can't wait to tell you everything about the finalization of Europe's first full-scale Hyperloop test facility. And we're also gonna give you a sneak peek in the near-term foreseeable future on where those Hyperloop developments will bring us. Why do we need Hyperloop now in your perspective? The, the real specific niche where really, Hyperloop really jumps out is that it's the only modality that can go at very high speeds yes. and is very efficient. We are aiming at being about 10 times as energy efficient as the airplane. European aviation is growing 5% year on year and so that means a doubling every 50 years. Um, and we know that um, there's non-CO2 effects of aviation, so serious cloud formation, which almost doubles this effect. You need uh, a lobby strength, so I stand by uh, hard to see uh, that uh, also the government is working with us and is a partner for this beautiful pearl of innovation. Thank you, Frauke, for your wonderful questions. Yeah. And it's indeed true that we could only have made this happen with the help of our partners, with the small team that we have. We have developed a switch that can connect all of us directly without any intermediate stops. And that's what we test in this facility, among others, to fully unlock the potential of the Hyperloop. And to do that, we need one crucial component. That component is the lane switch. It allows us to connect every city like a highway does. Sasha, where is the switch, where it's yes. all about? So what it's all about is this part. This is the track okay, that we yeah. use to levitate. And if we go down further, so the peak will move underneath and underneath. And then at this point, the track splits in two. So here we can choose to either go to the left side or to the right side. I think it's, it's very important that it's not just the Dutch government that is involved. I think the strength is exactly in that uh, our dear uh, Euro Commissioner Violetta Bulls is present here because we cannot do it uh, on our own, not hard uh, can do it on our own, not the Netherlands. We have to do it on a European scale. Uh, what they, all the presenters communicated is of course melody for my heart, but now we need hard proofs. Uh, so uh, what I can promise at this point is that we will continue to walk the path together. So um, let's see what's going to emerge out of it, but certainly a very exciting technology that could potentially uh, lead the way um, in the future. You know, next to safety, there's uh, also another very important point, which is interoperability. In, the, in Europe, it makes sense to think of a network. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in order to be able to connect these individual routes that will uh, keep emerging, it's important that these infrastructural parts are compatible. How is everything going in the control room? Are you ready to show I... us the switch? Yes. Yes? We are totally ready. I have checked in with my fellow engineers here, and it seems that everything is A-OK. -okay. Wow, people, what a moment. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm very, very proud to announce the realization of our next facility, a high-speed facility, and it's called the European Hyperloop Center. This is a three-kilometer facility that will allow us to actually break the current Hyperloop speed record and test all of these technologies at 700 kilometers an hour. Yes, we are going to press the red button. 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero! All right, Gert, are the levitation systems ready? Yeah. <laughs> Mikael, are the air springs ready? And Bauke, is the switch ready? Three, two, one, and propulsion successful! And Switch is approaching now, and Switch has been taken successfully. And the test has been successful! Woo!